three kinds of aspirants in my mind, sir. Folks that do general awareness on a daily basis, others that do it on a weekly basis, and those that do it on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. I fell in the first category, sir. So hi everyone and welcome to another episode of RBI Gravy Topper Series. Today with me is Mr. Tia Ozupun. He has cleared this examination this year, RBI Gravy 2022, and has secured AIR 165 in his very first attempt. So I congratulate you, Tia Ozupun, and welcome to the channel. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you for having me. It's a, it's an honor and a pristine privilege to be sharing this moment in time with you. And I'm just really grateful for this unique opportunity. Yeah, we are also glad to have you here. So, Tia, let's start from the introduction part. Uh, I would like to know about your educational background and uh, what did you do after that? Were you working somewhere? Right. So, just a brief introduction. So, I come from the town of Koima, Nagaland. I did my schooling till my 10th standard in Koima itself, after which I did my 11 and 12th in Lakshman Public School in New Delhi. I was fortunate enough to get uh, admitted into Sri Ram College of Commerce, where I did my bachelor's degree in commerce. I was then fortunate enough again to get placed where I worked at Bau Consulting as an associate for two and a half years. And uh, after that, I made a pivot to prepare for the RBI grade B exam. Okay, so are you working currently or you left your job for the preparation? Right, so I quit my job in order to solely focus for the preparation of this exam. Okay, when was it when you quit this job? I decided to resign back in October 2021, okay. but I came to the realization of the existence of this exam mm -hmm. back in March 2021. So I tried managing both you know, this exam and my job, but I realized that uh, the RBI grade B examination, it uh, demanded a lot more. Mm -hmm. So that's when I decided to make a, uh, I decided to tunnel vision mm -hmm. into this exam solely. So uh, one thing here I would like to ask that, is it necessary to quit a job because so many people are here right. which are uh, working professionals right, right. who cannot afford to leave their job That's right true. so is it necessary to leave their job for the preparation or we can do uh, something else for that right so i can't categorically say that it is a must that you need to quit your job because i've seen other aspirants in my batch also they've cleared the rba examination along with their jobs as well mm -hmm. so i would not recommend that you have to you know necessarily quit your job but I took that call because I know myself, so I realized that I could not multitask my way through this exam. Mm. So it's it all comes down to the individual, I believe. Yes, yeah, so I think it depends on the individual, right? right. How how he, how the person is managing his stuff. Right, right sir. Yeah. So yeah, one thing uh, I would like to ask here that uh, you graduated from SRCC, then you went to that management consultancy. Right. So you were actually out of this competitive world. I mean, you were not into this. Yes. Sir. So how did you come to know about this examination? I mean, what was the source of that? Right. So it's actually very interesting. Like you said, I was in corporate India. So I was absolutely, I was not exposed to government exams. Yes. It was only when I was reading this book called I Do What I Do by Raghavan Rajan, former governor of RBI. So he spoke about the integrity of officers in RBI and that piqued my interest. So I decided to do my due diligence on the internet and that's when I stumbled upon the existence of the RBI grade B examination. All right. And so yeah. that's, that's very interesting. You came to know about this examination from a book. Generally yes, right. people came to know about this exam from their peers, from right. their friends. Right, right. So that's very interesting. So we can learn one thing from here. Ki, while we are reading any book, we can learn anything from that. Exactly. And which can make our life something different. Right, right. right. that's very true. Yeah. So, uh, let's talk about your preparation strategy then, Tia. Sure. So, I believe that you have cleared this examination in your very first attempt. So, there must be something uh, different, something unique about you. So, let's discuss your strategy. What was the strategy of phase one, phase two, and then we'll come to the end. Sure, sure. Uh, so, when it came to phase one, prelims, I... I had planned out that I wasn't really going to try and maximize my score when it came to quant and reasoning because they were not my areas of core competence. I had identified that from the get-go. So my strategy, my anchor was solely focused towards general awareness. That's what I did. So there are three kinds of aspirants in my mind, sir. Folks that do general awareness on a daily basis, others that do it on a weekly basis, and those that do it on a monthly basis. I fell in the first category, sir. Okay. So what I did is, I think the key differential here for me as an aspirant is that I decided to do general awareness via spotlight that I received from Anujindal on a daily basis. 
So I would get around 50 to 20 pages of that document. So what I would do is I would read that document and I would make copy paste whatever I thought was absolutely relevant on MS Word. So that way I would condense that 15 to 20 page document into hardly one or two pages on that MS Word file. So if I was able to compound that over a period of 30 days, instead of having a 200 or 250 page document, I would have a concise, personalized general awareness note of around 20 pages. So that's that made things very uh, manageable, sir. And when it came to quant, uh, initially when I started, I decided to go topic wise. I would go to YouTube. I would also leverage on the course materials on Anuj Jindal. I would go topic wise. Say, for example, I would do profit and loss on one day, averages, mixtures, allegations on a different day, time, speed, distance. But then I sort of realized that I wasn't covering enough ground. So that's when I decided to go all out on reverse engineering myself through mocks. And that's exactly what I did. And uh, just a word of advice to future aspirants when it comes to quant. You, you shouldn't fall prey to the sunk cost fallacy. Just because you have worked very hard in a particular area like profit or loss, on the exam day, if you're not able to solve that particular question, you should be strong enough to move on. Yes. Treat all questions equally. And when it came to reasoning, sir, my cardinal objective was to identify questions that I was not comfortable with. I just avoided certain questions like puzzles. Uh, so I was comfortable with circular arrangements. But then again, Circular arrangements could be framed in such a way that, you know, they were mixed with blood relations or circular arrangements could also have people facing outside, people facing inside. So that's when I knew I had to just, you know, avoid such questions. So I was very clear on what I should avoid. Yes. And for reasoning, we get around 45 minutes. So the first five minutes, I would particularly carve out time to look at the questions that I'm not comfortable with. So that's what I did for reasoning. And for English, it was all true mocks only. I think. Uh, the key is to just give a lot of mocks for prelims and to have a highly concentrated focus on general awareness as well because that's where you get to really maximize your score. I think that's very interesting. You first identify your weakness and right. then work accordingly, then strategize accordingly. That's very difficult to do actually because generally during the examination what happens is that uh, we move on to every question. Okay, let's solve this. Yes. Not, let's solve all the questions. Right. So that should not be the idea because we the idea is to clear the cutoff and not uh, in phase one, actually, exactly. that is the qualifying stage. Yes, sir. So yes, we sir. just have to clear the cutoff, and we have to actually uh, figure it out. Ki how we can clear the cutoff. That exactly. is the main idea. Right. right. And that condensation wala part is very interesting. <laughs> Thank I, you. I believe people are generally asking these questions to me. Ki how we can do such huge number of pages right. in, in, right. in such, a, such a short span of time. So this strategy can be followed. I yes. Think. That's very good. So I just, I like to add one more thing. So when we try and condense that uh, MS Word file, so when you have a 20 page document and when you get to actually print it out mm -hmm. and when you have that physical file with you, it feels a little too personalized because you know, you have been working on that document. Yes. So you feel good about it. And I also gave a lot of uh, tests as well for general awareness. There's a freely available website called GK Today. Mm -hmm. So I would leverage on Spotlight mm -hmm. for all the content and I would also test myself on GK Today. Yes, so testing yourself is very important yeah. because whatever you are reading, whatever you are studying, it is going right way or not, that is important. Exactly, sir. Yeah. So let's talk about phase two then. What was the strategy in phase two? Because uh, this time the ESI question paper was a bouncer yes, to everyone. Exactly. So what was the strategy in phase two? Uh, well, sir, for phase two, uh, my core objective was to not deviate or digress from the syllabus that was given by the services board. So what I did was I got a printout of the syllabus and I would keep it beside me on a daily basis. And I leveraged a lot on the course material, had enough content on Anush Jindal. And if I felt that there was a particular topic where I could supplement with more information, I would just go to the internet, Google it out, and I would personalize the answer. And what I did for uh, ESI, FM, uh, management, finance, and economic and social issues, I maintained notes again on MS Word. Mm -hmm. So sometimes there were times when I would copy paste from the content course material, and there were other times when I would have to personalize those uh, answers on internet. So unconsciously as well, so I was actually preparing myself for typing it, yes. typing it out for yes. the main, main event. So that also helped. So I would suggest, I mean, it's not a hard and fast rule that you need to maintain notes on a digital form, but if you're able to do that, you might just unconsciously get up to build yourself up to speed with the typing. Yes. So that also helps. So yeah, that's exactly what I did. So I went uh, on a topic by topic wise basis. Mm -hmm. And yeah, a lot of people ask me about books as well. So I also fell into that category. I did purchase a book for management. I also purchased a book for economics and social issues by Ramesh Singh. 
for management it was uh, something pralar i believe but then i realized that they were a little too bulky yes. the course materials that i was getting was pretty concise to the point so that's what i decided to do i decided to chuck the books and i decided to stick to the course materials and information that i found on the internet all right i think the the most unique thing the most important thing which i can extract from your strategy is the note making part yes sir uh, right. you relied on that uh, try try to make it personalized right. i think that helped in descriptive part as well so what was the strategy to tackle the descriptive part because you were not you were you are not from a upsc background yes, you sir. didn't have any experience of uh, any other government examination right, right. and you just Uh, this was your first attempt yes. so what was the idea what was the strategy behind the descriptive part right so so as i had mentioned earlier note making was a very big part of my exam preparation so as i got closer and closer to my mains examination i realized that i had quite a lot of content on every topic be it inflation be it growth fiscal policy monetary policy i had it all but then when i tested myself in a time constrained environment where i had to frame those answers and structure it i found it a bit difficult So towards the end, I really worked towards structuring my answers in that time constrained environment. So that's 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 how I dealt with the descriptive portion as well, sir. All right. So I think this is again a very important thing that we have to keep in mind. We aspirants we have to keep in mind that collecting data is not it. It is important, right. but structuring that data is equally important because exactly, in sir. the uh, descriptive part when you are writing the answer the most important thing is structure i believe you have to structure your answer uh, properly exactly yeah. all right here so let's come to the interview part okay. and i can see that you have scored very beautiful marks in the interview 68 marks you have scored out of 75 i think these are the marks of two students which you are <laughs> which you have taken so uh, what was the strategy for interview part uh well so when it came to the interview uh my focus was to dial it back to you know the general awareness topics being comfortable with reading the newspaper as well so this is where general awareness also comes into play you have a lot of content you have a lot of dots but when it comes to the interview you should be able to connect those dots so a lot of thinking goes into the interview stage and there are a lot of reports as well so i leveraged on reports like uh, financial stability report trends and progress report of bank in india you had the budget you had the economic survey which you guys did use beautifully thank you for that and there was also this very important report on the functions and workings of rbi that's like the bible for the reserve bank of india so i focus on those reports and then since there are a lot of moving parts i also had to focus solely on my bio data as well and uh, i just want to there here's a point that i'd like to make for the future aspirants so when it came to the bio data i sort of went all out I wrote about all my all the positions and responsibilities that I held in college. I also mentioned about the internships that I did. And one thing I realized is that uh, I mentioned about an internship that I did in ONGC. And uh, when I was preparing for my bio data, I realized that I should have probably chucked it because it adds an additional layer of uh, burden. Yes. So to the future aspirants, uh, you don't necessarily have to mention everything on your bio data. Just try to keep it light, and that'll give you a lot of time to focus on other areas. Mm-hmm. and coming back to the bio data again i had to uh, leverage on my college subjects as well mm-hmm. so there is a lot of moving parts when it comes to the interview but at the end of the day it's how you're able to express yourself it's how you're able to express the knowledge that you've gained the knowledge that you've garnered throughout the preparation of these exams yes so i think uh, the strategy uh, it was actually uh, you prepared for the current affairs part right. for the and uh, from the rbi website right yes. everything from the rbi you should yes. know when you are going from right. rbi interview you should know about rbi exactly. exactly. yeah. right now what was the actual experience of the interview well so it did go yeah uh when i first saw the rbi building in kolkata it was huge it was magnificent mm-hmm. everything that a full fledged central bank is supposed to be when i entered the building i got on the elevator went all the way up to the 15th floor it felt very posh they had kenny g the saxophone player playing on the background of the elevator i was fairly confident but the moment i stepped into the conference room uh, with seeing that big conference table with you know five distinguished looking individuals it caught me off guard i was actually very nervous and my heart started beating faster i felt like i was shivering my knees were getting weaker but the panel members were very cordial they may have realized that i was getting nervous so they tried to make me feel at ease by asking simple questions i mean just basic questions yes. and when it began the chairman he looked at my bio data and he said okay you studied in this college you scored this much fine 
Uh, people sitting beside me are all experts in the field of finance and economics. I will give them the opportunity to ask you questions. And if there's anything that I want to ask, I'll prove it. And that's how they got the ball rolling. So the questions were quite reasonable, to be honest. Sir. Uh, the first panel member uh, asked me a question on uh, the integrated RBI Ombudsman scheme. So and then there, there was another cross-questioning on that. I wasn't able to handle all the cross-questions uh, properly, but uh, the initial ones, I gave it my best shot. And they also asked me about basal norms. They asked me about uh, my work-related uh, this thing. They asked me uh, questions around revenue. And there was another female member, I think, uh, she tried to grill me. So she asked me about uh, the core banking supervision metrics. Mm -hmm. So I was fairly confident with that aspect because I had read the financial stability report of the trends and progress of the bank in India. So I started quoting figures from there, like CRER is at 16.6% or gross non-performing assets ratio has come down to 6.9%. But then this panel member, she wanted more. So she kept digging. So she started asking me, what are the industry standards for GNP and all that? So I, because I didn't know, I, I didn't have any idea. I just said, ma'am, I'm not aware of it. So there were many times when I could not, you know, come with answers for the cross-questioning, but that did not deter my spirit from, you know, getting to be wanting to, you know, express how I really, what I really had in mind, as a matter of fact. Right. So, so how did you manage to tackle that situation when you were not able to answer any question? Right. So I just said, uh, I was very honest. I was very upfront. I just said, ma'am, I'm afraid I don't know. Yes. And that's and they were okay with that. Yes. So they being honest, being honest is, I think, the idea. Yes, exactly. And you have to be honest because yeah. these people are the panel. They will catch very you. much yeah. experience. Right. They will. They can easily catch. Exactly. You. Right, right. Uh, Tia. So at the end, uh, any message, any suggestion that you would like to the current aspirants? Because now, at a very young age, you have cleared this examination in your very first attempt, and I believe that. The guys who are watching this interview, this conversation will learn a lot from you. So anything, any message, any suggestion that you would like to give to the students? Sure. Uh, here are my two cents uh, to all the future aspirants that are watching this video right now. Uh, I just like to tell you guys that uh, it takes courage. I mean, it shows tremendous courage that you have decided to take the step to prepare for an examination of this magnitude. So you have made the first step. Kudos to you for that. Now, all you have to do is just uh, keep at it believe in yourself, believe in the power of uh, mental resilience, delayed gratification, and most of all, try to maintain a healthy obsession about the Reserve Bank of India. Because if you really want to make it there, you have to be excited and also healthily obsessed about it. So yeah, just believe in yourself. And uh, there, I always believe that there is light at the end of the tunnel. So yeah, that's my message. All right, Tia. So it was nice talking to you. And yeah. हम मिलते रहेंगे और बात करते रहेंगे थैंक यू सो मच सो गाइस इट वाज टिया ओजुकुम फॉर अस आई बिलीव यू गाइस हैव लर्न अ लॉट फ्रॉम हिज स्ट्रेटजी एंड इसी तरीके की और स्ट्रेटजी आती रहेगी फ्यूचर में एंड इफ यू गाइस हैव एंजॉयड दिस वीडियो प्रेस द सब्सक्राइब बटन एंड द लाइक बटन एंड या आई विल सी यू इन द नेक्स्ट सेशन एंड यस इफ यू गाइस हैव एनी डाउट्स यू कैन आस्क मी इन द कमेंट सेक्शन एनीथिंग व्हिच यू वांट टू आस्क यू कैन आस्क ऑलराइट सो गुड बाय टेक केयर एंड गॉड ब्लेस